And now for today's Bible question. Today we've been learning about the kingdom of Jesus and about the principles of grace and greatness in his kingdom. We also learned about the compassion of the king and his prophecy about his rejection at Jerusalem. Someone might ask the question, can men still give new prophecies today? There are many people today claiming to be prophets for God and prophesying all kinds of things to their congregations. We should be very cautious when we hear these claims and remember the biblical test for prophecy found at Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 20 to 22. These verses teach us that when someone claims to be a prophet but their words do not come to pass, then they are worthy to be put to death. Now today we're not going to go around killing these false prophets, but be assured that God hates those who pretend to be speaking for God, but really are false prophets. The scriptures would indicate to us that the special gift of prophecy would be done away with after the age of the apostles. Prophecy was the method God used to speak to his people in an age when the Bible was not yet complete, and also to authenticate his words spoken by the apostles. Today we have the Bible in its completion, and we read that God has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. This means that the scriptures reveal to us all that he wants us to know about Christ and therefore how to live before him in godliness. The gift of prophecy was a sign gift, but its usefulness was superseded by a greater and more perfect revelation given in the completed canon of the Holy Scriptures. Men have always had a fascination with prophecy, and many who have claimed to foretell events in the future have time and again proven to be wrong. All that God wants us to know about the future, he has revealed to us in his word. And so if someone claims to know things about the future that are not from God's word, then we can know that they are a false prophet. Some have been saying the world will end on a certain day in 2011. They support this prophecy from various scriptures. And if we are not careful in our study of the word of God, we could easily fall prey to this teaching and look foolish when the prophecy is proven false. This particular prophecy has been postulated as a truth hidden in scripture, but now revealed to the elect. The scriptural basis for the prophecy rests upon some interpretations of scripture in 1 Peter 3, referring to one day as a thousand years, and applying this prophetically to the seven days before Noah's flood, and then extrapolating it to mean 7,000 years from Noah's flood until God judges the world, which they claim will be in 2011. It is certainly an interesting theory, but there is little if any merit to infer this meaning from the text. One has to stretch the meaning beyond the context to arrive at this fanciful interpretation. The prophecy lacks credibility because it is a contrived interpretation and certainly not the plain meaning of the text. Men who fancy themselves as prophets with special insights and prophecies that extend beyond the plain teachings of Scripture are dangerous and deceptive, and Christians should be on their guard against such claims. It is better and much safer to listen to God speak through his word than to listen to men speak things not found in God's word. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. This is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 7 through 10.